What is it? <laughs> oh my shark. god! <laughs> that is gargantuan! So wait, we can't get in the water with that, right? We're going to. Lurking in almost every corner of the ocean, from our coasts to the depths of the pitch black ocean floor, lives a 450 million year old prehistoric creature that is one of the most feared apex predators to have ever existed. Sharks. There's no doubt that you've seen images of sharks in films, having fed the fear towards them to completely irrational heights. So high that four out of 10 Americans admitted they're scared to swim in the ocean just because of them. But the reality is shark attacks are incredibly rare. Like so rare that the chances of getting attacked by a shark is one in 11.5 million compared to the chances of getting struck by lightning being about one in one million. And while scrolling on Instagram one day, I came across this video from a shark conservationist named Mike Coots that completely blew me away. But the most perplexing part about this video was that Mike actually lost his leg in a shark attack when he was 18 years old. When I was 18 years old, I got attacked by a shark. And I think the jaws were sort of on this side and that's why I lost this leg. And was now back in the water filming the very creatures that made him an amputee. It's just, to get bit by the shark and to use that as something to help make a change, I mean, to me, it's absolutely worth it. Fascinated by Mike's unlikely journey from shark attack survivor to shark conservationist, we reached out to him to see if we could come to Hawaii to understand how this happened. After he said yes, he mentioned that coincidentally, it was the high season for tiger sharks, specifically the type of shark that actually attacked him, and that we had a very unique chance to attempt to go diving with them that week. To put this into perspective, tiger sharks are the second most dangerous sharks on Earth, with great white sharks being the most dangerous. But to swim with great whites, you can only do it in a cage, meaning that this would be the most dangerous swim in open water with a shark possible. So while putting our trust in the hands of those taking us out, we said our goodbyes to the guys in LA as they were finishing up an Iceman documentary and we're on our way. Wow, look at that. Oh, nice car. Did you guys start YouTube, paying yourselves we... more? Be... On YouTube, no, make... no, 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 no. No. We get to go. Tell me not. All right, we'll see you. <laughs> We're going to Hawaii. 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 <laughs> Anytime I walk into this airport, I have PTSD from having spent a full day here. Please. God, <laughs> I don't want to be at this airport. <laughs> Hey, so this is gonna sound crazy, but I'm on a challenge right now where me and my friends uh, were trying to. You haven't even heard the challenge. I don't trust you. Hawaii. We're going to Hawaii. The Waikiki. Hawaikiki, Waikiki, Waikiki, Waikiki. Going to Waikiki, Waikiki Beach. Actually, we're not. Go we're going to the North Shore, so oh. we're not. <laughs> we're not really going to Waikiki. This seat is taken. Really? It's for my uh, pet. Your pet what? Pet idiot. You're blocking the aisle, Thomas. My name is not Thomas, it's Thomas. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This feels sorry. very sorry. unnecessary. Sorry. It feels like you're doing this on purpose. Sorry. I usually need to do that. I got a fart. Like that, it's like a vacation vibe, but it's all goofy. I keep forgetting that we're <laughs> hopping into the water with sharks. I feel like one of the top irrational fears in the world is to get bitten by a shark when you're swimming. But Mike is coming with us. It, is, it actually happened to him. I'm very curious to understand his relationship today with sharks. Good morning. We are finally ready to go diving with the sharks. Uh, only issue is that Tommy is missing. But hold on, is that Tommy over there? What is he doing? Fresh water in, cold, fresh, cold, cold ice water in, cold, hot, cold water, hot day, hot, cupid day, hot day, get your bottle water. Tommy? Cold water, 30 bucks a pop. What are you doing, Thomas? We're here to go diving with sharks. We're really busy. What? on earth are you doing? Try to make some extra cash on the side, okay? That's your sign? If I could figure this out online, I would. Tommy, have you not been watching our videos the past three months? What do you mean? 
Yesterday videos have been sponsored by Shopify. Shopify is an all-in-one website where no matter your technical ability, you're able to build an online store, whether to use as your main business or as a side hustle. And actually, if you've been watching any of the videos that we've been making, you would know that yesterday was giving away a 14-day free trial. If you just click the link at the top of the description. Really? Yeah. We've been using it for the past four years. It's what we built Seek Discomfort on the back of. I didn't have any e-commerce experience prior to that. I mean, there's even a new $5 starter plan that literally allows you to open a store in minutes with a no-code setup that'll allow you to sell products to your communities on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Etsy, Spotify, TikTok, whatever it is that you're trying to do. So you should clearly be knowing about this and not sitting out here wasting your time. You so I didn't have to Uber out here? No. At five in the morning? And I think you should just build your store online using Shopify and make this 10 times easier than what it is. Thanks. Shopify? Can I write that down? So click the link at the top of the description below to start your free trial. <laughs> Was this dumb? <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's go see some sharks. <laughs> How you feeling, Thomas? Yeah. This will be cool. I feel the same way. <laughs> They're actual wild animals. How do you have any control over that? And also, we can't like run away. What am I gonna do? Paddle away from a, a tiger shark? I'm laughing now, but I'm actually quite concerned. There's the North Shore. Okay, I think this is Mike. Hey. Morning. What's up? Yeah, yeah. How you doing? Good. Nice Pleasure. To meet you. Nice to meet you. Wow, well, this is gonna be incredible. This is gonna be amazing. I don't think we could have picked a better day. Really? Yeah. Glassy, sunny. Perfect. Yeah. That's incredible. Did you grow up like surfing and getting I did, into yeah, the water? Yeah, yeah. I probably caught my first wave at three or four years old. Three or four? Yeah, uh -huh, yeah. And That's so young. Yeah, I was, was hooked right from then on. As a, as a child, like my friends and I, we just all wanted to be pro surfer. Had a, a really amazing coach and we competed a lot at sponsors. Um, and wow. You just, you, you think that's your, your path. Huh. Yeah. So I had just graduated high school. I was 18 years old at the time. So we, we jumped in the water. It would have been a little past seven in the morning. I was um, with my surf team. There was probably like six of us. This last wave of a set came and I started paddling for it. And a guy next to me that I'd never surfed with before, he started paddling for it as well. And as soon as I made an initial motion, like I'm gonna catch this wave, a large tiger shark came up from underneath me, it, like completely blindsided me. I didn't see the fin breach the surface. Nobody yelled shark. It was just a complete, blindsided attack and I just felt an immense amount of pressure on both my legs. The shark clamped down like really tight on my right leg and I knew it was a shark, it was very visual. It, it lifted me out of the water and started swaying me back and forth. Um, and it felt like maybe five big Hawaiians were sitting on my leg, like just this crazy amount of pressure, zero pain. And I stuck my hand in its mouth to try to get my legs released and, and that didn't work and it lifted me even further out of the water and started really ragdolling me back and forth. My left hand, I punched in the nose and uh, it let go of my, my legs instantly. And I got back on my board, I looked at that surfer next to me. He was white as a ghost, like his eyes were popping out of his head. I yelled, shark, go in. And he beelined to the beach. My right leg started doing the spasm, like an uncontrollable shake. And I thought it was the shark finishing me off because he just like, what is that shake in my leg? And I looked over my shoulder and it was my leg severed right off, like blood squirting out, like out of the movies. Um, the shark did a perfect job just cutting it right off and then I knew I was in big trouble. Fortunately, a little wave came, I rolled right up to the beach. The wave pushed me right up the sand, and I tried standing up, but I didn't have a foot, and without a foot, you can't stand, and I, I sort of did this little tumble back down this little sand dune. Um, my friend Kyle, who had caught the first wave of the set, he saw what was happening, he rode right up to me, he dragged me further up, took my leash, made a tourniquet. Um, later, found out that saved my life, like real quick thinking of Kyle, and. Um, said a prayer for me and I, I did a little prayer and I thought I might die but it wasn't scary. It was just sort of the surreal like I was watching a movie of somebody else in a way um, um, and still no pain. A truck saw what was happening as well. They drove right up to, the, to me on the beach. They threw me in the bed of the truck and we hauled ass to the emergency room. Damn. Yeah. It was an intense morning. You were 18 years old? Yeah, 18 years old. Um, became an amputee right there. And then on the beach, and I, I woke up and I came to, and I um I wasn't disappointed that I was missing a limb. I, I thought I was gonna die that day on the beach, and woke up with my family and friends around me, and I I just I felt grateful to be alive, and I felt like a new chapter was beginning. Mm. Yeah. 
How often do you do this? Um, I was here two weeks ago. Best time of year to see tigers. That's pretty cool. So we're coming into high season. I mean, you can surf every day and snorkel and not see a tiger your entire life. Wow. It's not that common at all. I mean, there's nothing else on earth like it. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what how, are we doing, guys? <laughs> how big are they? A mature female can be upwards of 15 feet. They're size by size with a great white. How are you doing? Good, how are you guys? Hello. Good. Great. Well, I'm Hannah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What's, yeah. the, what's yeah. the waiver waiting for, I wonder? <laughs> How's the nerves? Oh, I'm totally fine. Yeah. <laughs> no, honestly, I'm a bit, I'm a bit nervous. Yeah. yeah. They've guesstimated about 20,000 tiger sharks worldwide. That's it? Yeah. Wow. So you can imagine how special it'll be if we see one today. How are you feeling, Tommy? Not fully processed it. What do you do if it comes at you? Like, <laughs> if it does come into it and starts to, like, physically come into your area, is to push down on it. On its, nose. Way, on its nose, yeah. Okay. It's almost like a guide, so wherever that tiger shark's gonna go, you'll go with it. Um, push them away from your body, right? Hopefully you don't have to What are we talking about right now? <laughs> <laughs> Does that happen a lot? Um, it can. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sick. No. So I'm just going to go over some of the rules for in the water, some safety things, because um, that's our main goal today is to be as safe as possible, right? So I always want you guys to keep your fins on today. Bottoms of our feet pretty high contrast and flashy, especially when they kick around. They look pretty attractive to a shark. So we're going to climb up that ladder and then you guys can take your fins off once you're back on the boat. They can hear our engines from a mile away and they can hear a bird land on the water from several hundred yards. This is why we don't want to splash. It makes it seem like you're weak or injured, right? Our hands are pretty high contrast, kind of look like a crab or a squid, something a shark might want to check out if it's away from your body. Just try and keep your hands in close by. Just don't dive down and like wave at the sharks or anything. Okay, just try and keep them in close. Are you excited? <laughs> yeah, a little nervous. Well, Definitely a little nervous. nervous. Yeah. Yeah. Sharks, so yeah. Yeah. Expected, right? I think the main thing is that we're in their territory. Yeah. Oh, what? Really? Yep. See them right oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> they are very Probably close. There are so many. I thought we were going to see like one tiger shark. There's like 20 sharks. That was the nerves. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Not good, I'll be honest. <laughs> you actually saw the sharks. That's the tour. So that's it. We can go oh, back now. We can go back. Yeah. All right, pina coladas on me. If you like pina coladas. Does it ever feel strange anymore for you to get in the water? No. I have friends who tell me they don't want to swim in the ocean at all because they're fear of sharks. To have an animal that's got such a bad reputation yet is so needed in the health of our oceans, yeah. um, the health of our planet, it's a bit ironic that it's got such a bad rap when it's such an important part of a healthy ecosystem. It, it says a lot about you that this happened to you and then that you're now an activist for their conservation. In my mind, I would imagine the complete opposite reaction almost, you know, resentment and anger and fear. The ocean has taken such a big part of my life. It's taken, you know, a limb and the broken bones and scrapes and everything, but what it's given me back has been much, much more. Damn, you're f***ing cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so should we get in the water? Go for it. Getting that time. Okay. Yeah. Our objective today is to get up close with the tiger sharks, the ones that attacked Mike all these years ago. But as those are rare and hard to find, we first arrived at a massive school of sandbar sharks, who, although smaller than tigers, can be more reactive. If it makes you feel better, you're more likely to be bit by a New Yorker. That's always my favorite one. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Let's not go to New York. <laughs> Have fun, Thomas. This is a good idea, right? <laughs> Don't splash. <laughs> right, I feel like a prey. <laughs> no sharks so far. Really? That's good. <laughs> oh, shit, there's a lot of sharks. <laughs> that was fast. There's like 50 sharks underneath us. <laughs> we sure this is a good idea? <laughs>
so many freaking shards in the water. Was this attack what kind of ended your idea of yeah, professional yeah, surf? It, yeah, definitely. Um, and it, it's what caused my spark in photography. Really? I, about six months after the attack, trying to figure out what I'm going to do because my surfing career is done. And my coach had some camera gear and a lot of my friends are professional surfers and I started snapping photos of them. And, and so after my first shark trip bringing a camera, I was like, I'm, forget that. The greatest muse on earth is a shark. One thing after another, and before you know it, I'm immersed in this beautiful shark world and wouldn't, wouldn't change it for a thing. I've been fortunate to speak to Congress, speak to the United Nations on the importance of sharks. Have you met other amputees? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 A lot of other amputees, a lot of shark attack victims, and um, a common thread through a lot of them is they don't hate sharks. There's no animosity uh, because they love the ocean and they know that's just an integral part of the ocean. I'm alive and I can still surf. That's all I care I love about. That. I love that. <laughs> yeah. That's a committed surfer right there. I, love surf. I just want to surf, man. Yeah. <laughs> That was a good initiation. Yeah, it was. Yeah. That was very a good little easy. dipping our toes in the water. It was nice, it was calm, it was beautiful. I think we're all very happy with that. <laughs> oh my god. What is it? You saw that? Tiger shark. Yeah, it just huge. Yeah, it's so bad. much bigger than what <laughs> Oh my shark. god. <laughs> They're huge. Wow, it's looking at us. Oh <laughs> my god. <laughs> that is gargantuan. Beautiful. But wait, we can't get in the water with that, right? We're going to. Hello. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Best way to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. On the boat. Yeah. Thomas. Ocean. Yeah. Yeah. Thomas. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Tommy. Yeah. Tommy. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. Right before getting in the water with the tiger sharks, we were lucky to be joined by Ocean Ramsey, a marine biologist who is one of the world leading shark behavior experts from Hawaii, who's traveled the world studying sharks up close for over 10 years and has dedicated her life mission to their conservation. More notably, she's gained a lot of attention for being one of the only people in the world who can go open water diving with great white sharks, and at one point encountered one of the largest ones ever recorded. Today, amongst conservation missions, she has a group taking people swimming with sharks in an effort to teach how to safely interact with them and to remove their negative stigma. Tommy's skipping a lot of steps. He's never seen a shark before. And oh, he's so going, just going full, full board. <laughs> well, these two are really like very really mellow and relaxed. They've had a lot of human impact. You'll see both of them have broken jaws. Super Wasabi skinny. is like super skinny. And so mm. they're, they're just, you know, not the very trusting of humans. Yeah. What's, what's happening to their jaws? Broken from fishing. Yeah, I guess. like probably long lining if I was to guess. Look up long lining. It's horrible. Yeah, they lay hundreds of miles of net, a line, and it's a baited hook every three feet. And then they check it every three to four days. So everything on those lines is dead. They have an 80% bycatch rate. Bycatch is stuff they don't keep, and it's dead. So they throw it overboard. 40% of it sharks. So it's like, it's like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Mind blowing. The waste that goes on out there is like, you know, so we always tell everybody source your seafood. Sustainably. They don't know where it comes from. Well, let's get you it's coming from the long line. It's one of the big battles that we gotta correct, you know, uh, for sharks and for humans. So we should hurry up and get in the water because okay. they're rare to see and they okay. don't always stick around, okay. um, contrary to what most people would think. So we'll get in the water while we're still kind of seeing them around in case they lose interest, which is what yes. we'll usually do anyway. Yeah. Oh my god, it is huge! Oh, oh. Earth, do we just 
do. Dude, I got like this close. Dude, fucking gigantic tiger. Oh my god. I'm beyond words. Like, I, I, I didn't know it was even possible to get that close. We, we try and help people to overcome fear, but replace it with a high, healthy level of respect because they are apex predators. They are very capable. It's not a monster, just a really important apex predator that needs and deserves respect and protection. As humans, we kill an unfathomable 100 million sharks every year. That's 11,416 sharks killed worldwide every hour. In the past 50 years, however, we've only seen about 439 human fatal shark attacks, meaning that it takes us less than two and a half minutes on an average day to have killed more of them than they've killed humans in 50 years. As we let our fears rule over parts of our lives and fishing waste of this scale to exist, there are some real questions about how we treat our fellow species on our planet to ask ourselves. We could not have had a more serene experience alongside them, while seeing the human damage up close on just these few sharks. I hope that Mike's striking perspective and that Ocean and Juan's conservation work will inspire you to evolve your view of these creatures. Unfortunately, Steven Spielberg's Jaws and other films that followed forever changed our relationship to these animals. And so I hope a story like this can open your mind, that this can serve as a step to be more aware of where your fish is sourced and to avoid any shark fin soup or food at all costs. I hope one day that you yourself can take the chance to get in the water alongside professionals to experience just how majestic our ocean truly is in their presence. You were conscious when the shark was yep. attacking yep. you. Do you, like, you. Do you still have flashes to that? No, I've never had any flashbacks, no bad dreams, nothing. I'm very fortunate in that sense. Wow. Um, and it's brought me incredible opportunities in my life and a lot of purpose and I wouldn't change it for the world. If you were to ask me if I'd paddle out that morning knowing I would get attacked and lose a limb, absolutely. Really? Yeah.